This is going to be a kind of a combination of uh, case study and lessons learned from working with uh, clients of mine who started on Etsy and grew to the point that they were ready to move up to a more advanced e-commerce platform and build their own store. So, you know, that's why I'm up here talking about Etsy at a WooCommerce conference. So we're going to go through the why, you know, why move up from Etsy to WooCommerce and why WooCommerce specifically, um, the business cases and the uh, technical reasons for that, and then get into how, um, nuts and bolts of how the process I've developed with my clients um, to move their inventory over, keep everything synchronized, and then what to do with that um, Etsy shop that you used to have. Uh, do you keep it around? Do you shut it down? What's it good for? Can you use it for, uh, for other things to uh, help support your business? So getting into why. Um, for people, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with Etsy. It's uh, basically the largest craft fair in the world, always open, worldwide. Um, and it has uh, somewhere around 30 million uh, active buyers and somewhere I think 10 million active sellers currently. So you're in a, you know, you're in good company when you're on, you're on Etsy and you have uh, a lot of people who are coming to your store and being brought to your store. Um, so why would you want to get off of that? Yeah, here are the numbers. You know, 32 million unique visitors per month. Um, of the, oh, I was off by a factor of 10, that's okay. 1.8 million active sellers, and they, you know, between all of them, they make about two and a half billion dollars a year. Um, so these numbers are from 2015 or 2016. Etsy used to be pretty good about reporting their numbers, um, but when they started to talk about going public and then through the process of going public, they've stopped updating those. So these are um, numbers that are kind of uh, gleaned through market intelligence and, and uh, looking at outside tracking. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the uh, biggest, one of the bigger sites on the internet. It's got, you know, Alexa ranks it at uh, 64 in the US, 190 globally. So it's, it's, a, it's a big market to sell to. And that's one of the biggest benefits, and also one of the one of the uh, one of the reasons, uh, ironically, that uh, you might want to consider getting off of Etsy because you've got this ready-made market for you, but you don't really have any say in who Etsy brings to your store. These people come from all over the internet, but they are pre-qualified by Etsy, and then they get to see your store. So your ideal customers may not necessarily be in that group of, uh, of people who are coming by every day. Um, so who are these people? Um, those people are watching a high school football game, but Etsy buyers are about two thirds women. Um, half of them are you know, between 18 and 34, so you know, college age and, and beyond. And, um, I'm guessing because of the age demographic, um, two thirds of them uh, have no children, um, so small families, but uh, half of them earn less than $60,000 a year. So what that means is they are uh, very cost conscious. And um, again, these uh, numbers are estimates because Etsy stopped reporting that three years ago at the time it was about 20 dollars per order, uh, average selling price. So people estimate the average selling price for a piece of work on Etsy is 30 bucks. And so that creates an expectation of low prices. And Etsy um, helps that along by making it extremely easy to shop on price. So I did a quick search on Etsy for uh, state of Washington uh, cutting boards. And this is what Etsy showed me. Uh, and if you take a look at them, there's, there, there is some variety, but um, if you had to choose between these four cutting boards, you know, and part of this is the fact that the photography could, might be a little more distinctive, but are you going to get the one that's $48 over here, or the one down there that looks about exactly the same and it comes with a ribbon and a card? 
for only $29. Um, you know, so this guy is going to have a really hard time competing against Blackbird crafted over there. Um, and uh, you know, in addition to that, this is how people are going to see your products when they start searching. There's basically no branding except what you can put in your own image. And then once they do get to your, uh, once they do buy your product, um, you know, Etsy doesn't have any monthly fees or a subscription fee or anything, but um, to get a product up and listed as 20 cents, you have to renew that about every two weeks or else your products stop showing up in search. They'll end up on you know, page 65 or something. And then when you do make a, a, a sale, Etsy takes 3.5% of the final value uh, and then charges you a fairly competitive payment processing fee. But you're, uh, you're losing 6.5% of, um, of your gross income off of that. And for someone who is selling a very few high-end items, like I work with a lot of jewelers, that's a big chunk of change. And then at the other end, if you're selling a lot of um, low-cost products, that, uh, that takes out, um, your listing fees are really going to hurt you. So um, the pricing tier doesn't work for everybody, um, although it is very good for, uh, for another use, as I'll get to later on in the presentation. So when it comes to branding yourself on Etsy, your options, uh, as I said, are, are, are pretty limited. So this is a client of mine who uh, still has his Etsy store up, and we'll talk about what he's doing with it. Um, he also has a WooCommerce-powered store. But these are the things on this page, aside from the product photos, that you can customize. Those are your options for branding. Um, although, uh, Etsy recently added a banner that you can put up there if you want, which he hasn't taken advantage of. Um, and it's a mixed blessing because you notice what happens. You put that banner up there. Where do your products go? Right. It's, uh, you're, you're making a trade-off between branding and showing your products. So that leads to this phenomenon, which you know, I'm sure you've either asked or answered this question, you know, where do you get that cool hat or state of Washington cutting board? Oh, I got it from Etsy. Like, no, you know, I got it from so-and-so who sells on Etsy. Um, your brand is not your own. You, you are an Etsy seller, and people, if they want to get a cool hat of their own, they'll go to Etsy and search for cool hats, and maybe they'll find your store again. Maybe they'll buy the same one, but maybe they'll find someone else's. So, and uh, the, the, the final reason for wanting to get off Etsy is their uh, experiments. And um, they are continuously testing out changes to how their system works on segments of their users and uh, you know, buyers and sellers. Um, Sometimes they'll tell people that they're running an experiment that does so, so you know, this such a thing. Sometimes they don't say anything. Um, and one of the things that they do a lot of uh, experiments, experiments on is uh, search. Um, Etsy search historically has been very uh, basic, basically keyword driven. So for a long time, to get found on Etsy, you had to have product names that were about this long and had every single keyword that people could, might possibly use to search for what you're selling, um, you know, which wasn't very good, but people, people got used to it. Uh, and now Etsy's trying to improve their search, you know, make it more uh, comparable to how Google indexes pages so that you, your SEO, your Etsy SEO and your Google SEO uh, can actually you know, uh, grow together. But that means that people who had heavily optimized all of their products for the old search type were now getting penalized. And there are if you go into Etsy's support forums, um, there are multiple uh, support th or threads about what happened to all my sales, you know, search is going down. And some of them have you know, like 10,000 replies and have been going on for years. And, um, and what that really gets down to is that when you're selling on Etsy, you are uh, not selling on your own. They, they are in control of everything that you're doing. Um, and you're, the, the things that you do have control of are very small. So 
if you want to, you know, if, if you're trying to build a business that, uh, you know, has a reliable revenue stream, you're trying to address certain customers, a specific customer type that, you know, might not be well represented on Etsy, then, um, you know, you're, you're kind of out of luck. And if Etsy decides they want to change something um, about how their system works or what you're allowed to sell, um, you don't have much say in that. Uh, just over the summer, uh, Etsy changed a uh, policy that they'd had for a while. Um, they had allowed people in their vintage section to sell um, black memorabilia, which uh, is just kind of a fancy way of uh, selling old uh, racist dolls. And for a while, the, um, Etsy's stance was, you know, it's a historical artifact, you know, it's you know, a product of its time, it's collectible, and all that. But then last summer, or uh, I think it was actually this summer, they did a 180 and said, no, you can't sell those. You can't sell those on Etsy anymore. So there were a handful of stores that sold that type of product exclusively, who all of a sudden had to go uh, find somewhere else to sell, or maybe go out of business, or... Uh, reconsider what they're selling. So if you decide you want to move beyond Etsy, um, there's a lot of options to go on. Um, pattern up there is Etsy's own entry. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty similar to, say, Squarespace. The customization options are pretty limited to keep it simple. And what it allows you to do is to sell your Etsy catalog on your own domain. Um, so you can list products on Etsy and on your Pattern by Etsy site. Um, and recently they added the uh, ability to sell some products on the marketplace and other products only on your site. So you know, it's pretty flexible, but the, the problem is it's still Etsy behind the scenes and you're still subject to you know, all, of the, uh, all, all of the issues that, um, about control over things and audience and everything that, uh, that we were discussing. Um, you know, Squarespace and Wix, Weebly, a lot of people, God help them, moved to those uh, because, you know, they're used to doing it themselves, you know, and it's inexpensive. Um, but, you know, they're, you, you obviously start bumping your head against the feature set pretty quickly. Um, and, then, and then, of course, there's Shopify, which is uh, a very good e-commerce platform. It's, uh, you know, it allows you to do just about anything you want, sell anything that you want. You have a lot of control over, um, over how your site looks. You know, they support you with all sorts of infrastructure. Um, but the way I put it to my clients is if you're moving off of a hosted platform where you don't have a whole lot of control, um, why would you take all that time and effort to move to a, another hosted platform where you have a little more control but you're still, uh, you know, at the end of the day, depending on another company for your business's existence. And, uh, you know, since Shopify is a public company, they could be a target for acquisition. I'm kind of surprised Amazon uh, hasn't been creeping around them, but maybe they have. Uh, uh, recently, there was a, a financial analyst, uh, so-called, uh, I think he's more of a financial troll, who um, made some grumpy noises about Etsy's affiliate or uh, Shopify's affiliate program and tanked their stock. Uh, you know, so that because they are the publicly traded company with shareholders, they're vulnerable to that type of market activity. They might change policies, you know, change change focus, and yada yada yada. So, as I like to put it to my clients, you know, Etsy is like an infinite flea market. And you can go and get a table and start selling your stuff, but there's no, nothing saying that you come in one morning and your table's got moved all the way to back of, back of the store. And Etsy, say, and, you know, Etsy says, yeah, we thought it would be better back there, you know, where there are no people. Or, um, you know, or you come in and your table's completely gone. And they say, no, you can't sell that anymore. So you can go up to a platform like Shopify, which is kind of like getting a stall in a shopping center where a lot of stuff is provided for you. You don't have to worry about who's going to take care of the roof. You don't have to worry about you know, you know, plumbing issues or anything like that. And you, you, to an extent, you don't need to worry about um, uh, getting customers because you know, Shopify makes SEO um, you know, uh, very easy and they've got social integration tools that you can just snap in there and everything. But you know, if the uh, owner of the shopping center decides that they want to sell, uh, you know, and or uh, 
traffic moves out of town or something, you're kind of stuck there. So uh, I point them to WooCommerce because it's like having your very own building, you know, with your name on it. Um, and you're building your business on something that you own and uh, that you are as in control of as you can be in control of anything. You can move to a different host, you can add plugins, you can develop custom stuff, uh, and, and it can be tall and gold-plated, you know? <laughs> so that's why I counsel my clients who are, you know, who are growing and want to make their business a full-time business uh, to migrate off of Etsy and specifically onto WooCommerce. So how do we get that done? Um, the two biggest challenges that we run into are, you know, literally moving the listings from Etsy's data store to WooCommerce's. And then um, if you choose to maintain both stores or have other, other storefronts or do uh, you know, physical sales or something, how do you keep track of inventory so that someone doesn't order something from your Etsy shop that's out of stock, you know, or, you know, uh, something like that. Um, so migrating the listings over, uh, you used to not really have many options. Um, Etsy would let you download a CSV of all of your uh, listings, but um, it was, uh, it, you couldn't get your images with it. It would just give you image URLs, so you would have to go scrape your product images, you know, reassociate them with that, and, and upload them. Um, but recently, uh, in the past few years, they've started building an API that lets people actually talk to, um, the, uh, you know, talk to Etsy and get data out of the data store. You know, they, they were dragged their feet on that, understandably, because they don't want people selling Etsy things outside of Etsy because then, you know, they, they, miss, out, uh, they miss out on that traffic. Um, but it's actually gotten pretty good, uh, you know, because they need it for things like social media integration and, you know, integration with shipping services and everything. And Woo, of course, has their API. So um, I discovered a, uh, an excellent plugin um, that I use that takes all of that and, you know, maps the, uh, the different attributes from Etsy data to WooCommerce data uh, and sends it um, and, and imports it. Uh, the only thing it doesn't import are uh, digital downloads because um, Etsy doesn't expose the links to that in its API uh, because that would you know, allow you to just go and download an entire shop's inventory if you wanted to. So you do have to use uh, you know, another import tool like Woo's uh, own CSV import or, or um, uh, WP All Import or, or a plugin like that. Um, I'm not going to get too bogged down in the details on the plugin because this is their setup screen. Um, it's uh, full featured. I'll leave it at that. They have um, it. It grabs every single bit of data uh, out of um, uh, out of the Etsy API and does an excellent job of mapping it over and letting you do some batch changes. You can see over in the content area, you can tweak content. A lot of uh, Etsy sellers have their shop policies in the product descriptions on every product. So if you want to wipe that out because you, you don't need that in uh, WooCommerce and um, everything like that. Uh, and um, you can use it to uh, manage your inventory, although um, I'll get to, it's, I don't recommend doing that, and uh, I'll get to that in a, in a moment. But uh, it's very slick. You can, you can um, have it run every so often uh, on a schedule if you aren't, you know, uh, if you don't need to be, um, uh, uh, you don't need to be managing your inventory on like a five minute basis or something. So um, this is an actual, uh, you know, uh, import. Um, so you've got the Etsy product above and the WooCommerce version of it below. Um, it pulled in all of the categories and tags uh, and it will create um, WooCommerce categories and WooCommerce tags if they don't exist. Um, so basically the only, the only cleanup you have to do is in those categories uh, because Etsy's category system works a little differently from WooCommerce's and uh, um, you can end up with a lot of uh, redundant and uh, you know, recursively nested categories. So um, it's sometimes easier just to recreate those in Woo and assign the products if your uh, client's store has a lot of uh, complicated category combinations. Complicated category combinations, yes. Say it five times fast. So once you've got your products in there, um, 
if you do want to keep your Etsy store around and selling, uh, and there are benefits to that, um, how do you make sure that your inventory is synchronized? Um, there's a, a few ways that you can do that. Uh, um, again, through the API, there's uh, the ability to use services like uh, you know, Stitch Labs or Webgility or Etsy 360 um, to uh, synchronize all of your inventory. So there's, they're basically omni-channel tools, and uh, they integrate with Woo and Etsy and uh, a, whole bunch of other, uh, a whole bunch of other platforms. Um, the issue is that they're a fairly substantial recurring cost, uh, and they're not appropriate for a lot of my clients. I have one client who has, uh, who has Webgility and can't afford it, and, so, and she's very happy with it. But uh, if you can't afford the, I think it's something like $250 a month for their basic tier, um, and that can be a big hit for, for a, small, a very small business who's just starting their growth phase uh, outside of Etsy. So, so what to do? Um, Again, we have the API to, 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 to rely on. And um, the plugin that I use for importing, in theory, could be used to update uh, inventory. Um, and the reason, I, the reason I don't recommend doing that if you need to do uh, you know, up to the minute inventory management is that the, uh, using that plugin is overkill you know, in the extreme. And running that import is fairly resource intensive on your web server. So I wouldn't recommend having it going in the background over and over again uh, to maintain your inventory. Um, I had grand plans of uh, putting, hacking together a quick little proof of concept plugin to show uh, how you could manage inventory between uh, Etsy and WooCommerce, but um, of course, did not have the time to do that. But uh, because of something that Etsy has changed recently, it's, it's, actually, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. So, it used, uh, it's, it's how they manage uh, variable products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So historically, Etsy's variations were um, more like what we would call product add-ons in WooCommerce. Um, so it was, there was a little bit of, uh, you know, to, to reconcile inventory numbers between the platforms, you had to do you know, a little bit of uh, gymnastics to make that work. Um, Though quite recently, they've moved to a, a new model where uh, the product is not the listing. Um, the listing has what they call an offering inside it, which is uh, a layer of, of, or a container that they're not using right now. Um, I'm not sure what they have planned for it. So what is inside the offering or all of your pro is, is the product. And they're going to a more uh, WooCommerce-like variation model Although you can only have two variables because I guess they don't didn't want to deal with all the uh, complexity of um, having infinite numbers of variable products like we do in Woo, so you can have uh, you can have like color and size, and then each one of those uh, combinations is a product. So very similar to how WooCommerce works, where you've got uh, you know product attrib attributes that define variable products. You know, within a product container, so you can see the that the uh, the, the mapping between products to maintain maintain inventory and synchronize attributes and everything just got a lot easier. Uh, of course, you know, with WooCommerce, you can just keep adding circles until the thing just you know gets incredibly complex. Uh, so if you have if you're trying to work with um, you know highly customized items or or products that have a lot of options. Uh, you might have to reconsider how you how you uh, offer those. And I do have a client who sells jewelry that has can come with, I think it's like six different quotes imprinted on two different materials, with uh, three different types of chains that each come in four different lengths, and some can come with tassels. So. Um, they aren't offering those on their Etsy shop. They're keeping that on their WooCommerce store. So yeah, they, as far as I'm aware of, uh, there is not yet a plugin that just manages inventory syncing. Um, you know, Etsy has made it a lot easier with these, the, the changes they've made to how they organize products internally, but there's nothing out there at the moment. Um, and I didn't write one. So 
once you've moved your, uh, your products over, you've got your inventory syncing set up uh, or not, depending on what your plans are for your stores, um, what do you do with your Etsy store? You know, because for all of the flaws of Etsy, you know, if, you're, if you're doing well enough to be moving on to your own website, you have an established customer base there. You're probably still making sales. So um, you, you, you have the option, of course, of just shutting it all down and selling solely to, uh, through your website. But remember all these people who are on Etsy and um, who might not necessarily want to buy from a, you know, a standalone website. You know, there are some people who think you have the perception that you know, if you're just running your own store, how can that be secure? You know, I'm not comfortable with making a you know, payment or buying uh, merchandise. If they're you know, vetted by Etsy, then it's better. So you, you, can, you, have, you have this market that uh, you don't necessarily want to turn your back on. You know, it's a great source of uh, pre-qualified leads, essentially. And if we look back at the fees that Etsy charges for listings, um, if you're thinking of those as fees that get tacked on to a sale, um, they don't look that great. But if you're thinking of those as an advertising fee, it starts to look a lot better. You know, it starts to look very price competitive to an option like Facebook ads or um, AdWords or you know, any other paid ads. So you know, what I mean by that is you can list certain, amount, certain products on your Etsy site and essentially use it as a marketing platform to reach out to uh, people on Etsy and encourage them to come to visit your site. So you can use it uh, to market different things to the Etsy buyers um, or uh, start the bottom rung of a product ladder where you have entry level price, uh, products on, on Etsy and uh, as people want to move up and get more of your things or get something custom or something more expensive, you can put it on your website where the customers would be a, a bit more receptive to that. Um, and that's what uh, I call the, the Macy's strategy. I mean, if you look at Macy's, they carry products by very high-end brands, you know, like Coach bags. But the products that Coach sells at Macy's, uh, they don't sell on their website or on their own stores and vice versa. So you, uh, you get the entry-level products, you get attached to the brand, you get hooked on the products, and then the hope is that you ladder up and start buying the more expensive stuff from, from uh, you know, Coach themselves where they have a higher margin. And this, this works for artists and makers and small businesses as well. Um, so how do you get those people who are on Etsy to come to your website? You know, Etsy doesn't want you to send customers <laughs> off of Etsy because then Etsy doesn't get their cut. Uh, but you do have a few options. If you've got a social media audience and an email list, um, that is a fantastic way of doing it. And if you don't have a social media following or an email list, um, do that before you do anything I've talked about, because that's, that's basically uh, step zero. Um, so with your existing audience and customers, uh, you, can start, you can start pushing your website pretty easily. Um, but how about people who aren't your customers yet? Um, going back to the typical uh, Etsy page, you do have a few opportunities on here uh, to promote your website to just about anybody. Um, you've got the logo or the banner image that isn't shown on this shop, put your website URL in there. Etsy, so far, hasn't said you can't do that. You can drop your URL in your, uh, about, your, about your shop. The one thing you can't do is link directly to a product, uh, because that is one thing that Etsy will flag immediately. Um, and. Uh, suspend your store, you know, wrap you on the knuckles or something. Um, and they, they do provide you a tiny little link down here for, for your website. So, of course, use that. Um, you still don't support the Facebook pixel. That's correct. Yeah, because that, there's, there's no way to do that. Well, they would have to add the code on their ends. Uh, and, right. Google Analytics and Etsy Analytics are the only only game in town, you know, for as far as, as looking at your Etsy, uh, you know, analytics. Um, 
something that I, I recommend that's a lot more effective uh, than adding your website to your Etsy page, and you know, adding your website to your Etsy page is, is, a, is a good thing to do. You want to do it. But um, this client of mine uh, had wanted to start adding personalized notes in, his, uh, in, in all of his uh, orders. And I um, said, well, and, and he just was just writing them on a piece of blank piece of paper and putting it in, in there. And I said, uh, Christopher, you're missing out. So uh, quickly whipped up some stationery that he was able to get, you know, letterpress printed in a local shop, so nice heavyweight paper. And, um, you know, lo and behold, what's down there at the bottom? His website URL. So uh, if, you, if you bought from Etsy and you didn't know he had a website, well, there it is right in front of you. You've probably, uh, you're probably pleased with your product that you got from him. Uh, and if you want to reorder, you've got that URL um, right there. And it's also, a, you know, many other good branding and uh, you know, customer relationship reasons to uh, add a feature like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, this, uh, th we went very subtle with this uh, because he, he, he didn't want, uh, he, he didn't want it to be too marketing-y. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's making that message clear, uh, you know, for expanded selection or special products or uh, things like that. And one thing, and, and thanks for interrupting me so I could remember something, uh, is that um, when you're interacting with your, client, your, your customers on Etsy, you do it through Etsy Convos. So it's not, not uh, an email. Uh, and they're, um, they're pretty prickly about you uh, adding customers to, your, uh, to an email list. They don't offer uh, the capability of doing an opt-in uh, on the checkout page or anything. But um, in your combos, if you where you're discussing the orders, um, that's it's perfectly fine to put you know like a little signature down there that says join my email list, visit my website, you know to to see you know see new products, products we don't offer uh, on Etsy or anything like that. So uh, so for now, um, Etsy and Wu are are uh, pretty capable of working working uh, working well together. Um, you know, the question is, is Etsy going to continue to expose all these uh, endpoints in their API? Uh, they're under new leadership right now, um, and I suspect that they're going to be a little bit more open uh, and try to engage more of, of the web as a whole. But, you know, it's, uh, no one knows what lies in the mind of, uh, of the Etsy board. Um, and I think... Uh, we do have a slightly better idea of uh, where WooCommerce is going in Etsy. So. Uh, so we've got about 15 minutes for, uh, for any questions or uh, any topics that you think I might have skipped over or um, any other thoughts you have. Um, the slides are online uh, on my website. You can uh, download them as a PDF. And uh, uh, I'm on all of the social medias as DBDC LLC, because uh, it rhymes. So uh, thank you. <laughs>